it's 4.30 a.m. which means it's time to go for a run. So now I have to have breakfast and a shower and I've got to get ready for the day. There's a couple of Skype nurses clients this morning and then we're going to go float. So I know I haven't made a video in pretty much forever and I don't have any really good reasons for that to share with you. Um, just life, I guess. Uh, floating in a sensory deprivation tank is something I've wanted to do for quite some time now and I just thought that some of you might be interested in finding out I guess what it's all about. Um, one sec, sorry about my wet hair. I did just get out of the shower, so my bad. Um, all right, the kinds of things on my mind pre-float. I've done enough research to know that I'm confident with the cleanliness and the hygiene of the tank. I'm not worried about drowning or anything like that. If those are your primary concerns, just go and Google it. It's like there's so much information out there that I think you'll be fine. Uh, I don't really feel like I need to go over that right now. Um, I'm thinking about the practical things. Floating is a naked activity, so I'm wondering at what point you get naked. I'm wondering about the shower facilities because you do have a shower before you go in. So is the shower going to be in where the float tank is or is it like a communal shower situation because I hate those swimming pool shower situations. Um, stuff like that. Even though the logical part of my brain knows that the tank is filled with several hundred kilograms of Epsom salts, um, as somebody who has an ass like a lead balloon, I still feel like I'm going to get in and sink and I'll just deal with that when I get there because I know I'll float but I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around that concept. Uh, floating for me has always been a challenge. So I don't know what the filming situation is going to be. I'd like to at least be able to show you what it looks like in there. Um, I don't know that I'll be able to film. It might be a bit difficult. So I'll give it a go and otherwise I will see you post float. I have a confession to make. The first half of this video was filmed months ago. It was one of those videos that I had intended to make and then after my first float I kind of wanted to process um, my thoughts to tell you what I thought and then that led to me kind of just not finishing the video. The benefit of being really crap at finishing the video is that since my first float I've been several times and I feel like I can give you a little bit more insight into what it's like. So there are three things that I want to say about floating. Number one, go more than once because the first time is weird. For my first float, I found it hard to switch off because the whole experience was so strange. The shower was in the same room as the tank, which was really cool. I met Austin, the owner, who was lovely, and he showed me where everything was and how it all worked, and then he just left me to it. There is a neck pillow for people who freak out about letting their head go, but they recommend not using it. The first time around, I definitely had to keep reminding myself to let go of my neck and just trust that I will float. And you really do float. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. Um, I also had earplugs and it was up to me to decide when I closed the roof and turn off the lights. And so you have a lot of control. Um, I kind of just hung out with the top open for a while. And when I did close the lid, things got a bit weird. No matter what I did, I would steady myself with the handrails and I'd be perfectly still. And yet I still kept feeling like my entire body was spinning, like just moving. And I eventually would open my eyes and put my hands out and, because you can't even fit sideways in the tank and your brain knows that. But my body just keeps getting really, really disoriented and I would just close my eyes and keep feeling like I was spinning. Eventually, I was able to relax a little to the point where I was even wondering how much longer I had, how long it had been. I couldn't stop thinking about what time it was and if I was somehow missing my cue to get out. I even played around a little and ended up like splashing around a lot and just sliding up and down the tank because it was really fun. Um, this is why you need to go more than once. 
Um, the second time it was a lot easier because I knew what to expect and by the third time you just switch off and it's awesome. The second thing I would say is adjust your expectations. I had heard crazy things about people seeing things, hearing things, feeling like they were in space, having these meaningful revelations. I didn't really experience any of that. Uh, sometimes it felt like I was almost unaware of my body and then I would just wriggle my fingers and wriggle my toes and it would be all back to normal again. Um, what I did find is that it is a really beautiful forced rest. I couldn't check my phone even if I wanted to and because I've been doing hypnosis so much and for so long, the idea of being hypnotized for relaxation has kind of been killed for me, at least for a little while, because it just feels like work for me. So I really loved just being in this cozy place alone with my thoughts. That brings me to number three, and that is that being alone with my thoughts is not so scary. I was genuinely concerned about being left alone with my thoughts. Um, I'm a person who is constantly plugged in. I love being alone, I need lots of alone time, but I've never loved being alone with my thoughts. So even when I'm by myself, I'm always working, watching a show, listening to a podcast, texting, talking to someone on the phone, whatever. Like, I don't think there has been a time in many, many years where I've even walked to the supermarket without making a phone call or at least listening to a podcast. I spend a lot of time alone, but not alone and unplugged. So this kind of forced me to do that and it was really nice to realise that I don't have to worry about my thoughts. They're not scary and I should probably do that more often. I often end up just doing things because I don't think about them or I don't want to think them through and floating actually kind of helps me to stop doing that. In fact, I have some really big decisions that I need to make at the moment and I think I might go for a float to go and do that. So I will definitely go again. Um, I know there were three things I was going to say, but I'm going to go for four because why not? My skin feels amazing after I float. I get out of the tank feeling like my hair is concrete and I'm covered in this weird salty slime. I have a shower and suddenly I am smooth and glowing and my skin feels amazing. Definitely don't go if you have any cuts or anything like that, um, apart from the fact that it's kind of gross, it will sting like you wouldn't believe. Um, that's about it. If you have any questions about my floating experience, please put them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. If you have floated before and you would like to share, I would love to know what your experience was like. So please comment away and I will see you in the next video. Mwah. Also, I know I haven't made a video in forever and look, if there's something you wanna see, then feel free to comment below. I am going to be making a bunch more videos soon and I have uploaded on the subscribers only playlist because I so appreciate those people who have hung around for such a long time uh, with me really giving nothing in return lately. And so feel free to subscribe at amazingsleephypnosis.com. When you subscribe there, you will get an automatic email within a couple of minutes that will have a link to a subscribers only playlist. And there's a few videos over there that are exclusive to those subscribers of amazingsleephypnosis.com.